Hello, this is Patrick from 1CNC West, and in this video, we're going to take a look at four axis positional machining. Now, using positional machining, all we're doing is just using our rotary table just to index our geometry right to the face where we can machine our pockets and slots and so on. And then we just repeat that process as many times required for your component. Now, for this particular part, you can see we've got three faces we're going to need to index to. Now within one CNC we actually index two construction planes. So we're going to need to create a construction plane for each face. You're going to find that creating construction planes within one CNC is very, very simple. Let me demonstrate this. I'm going to come down here to our plane tools and you'll notice these are all the different techniques for creating construction planes. We're going to use create construction plane from three points. This is where you simply just take your cursor and digitize your first point. That's going to be the origin. That's going to be your X positive. That's going to be your Y positive, and there's your construction plane. Now let's save this. We'll click on the Save button. And why don't we just call this Face 1. Let's repeat the same process now for our other faces. There's our origin. Just left click. There's your X positive. Left click. There's your Y positive. Left click. There's your construction plane. And we're going to call this one Face 2. We just need to repeat this one last time. You can see it's very simple, very quick. There's our origin. Left click. X positive, and there's our Y positive, there's our plane, and we're going to save this guy here as phase 3. Whoops, phase 3. Okay, that looks good, and I think just to save time later, I'm going to select phase 1 right now. That's going to be the first phase we're going to, we're going to machine. Now we could take this into manufacture right now and machine it, but if we do that, we're going to have to specify a boundary. You can take solids right in, machine them right away, but if you don't specify a boundary, the toolpath's going to try to machine everything. Sometimes it's easier just to create geometry for the pockets and slots and things that you want to machine first. That's also very simple within one CNC. Let me demonstrate that. We've got a lot of tools up here for extracting geometry. I'm going to use the Extract Surface Edges tool. This is where you just take your cursor, hover over a face, and left click. As soon as you're done, you can see there's the geometry. Very, very quick. Let's repeat the same process for this face. Just left click. You can see all the edges now have that blue geometry. And we'll repeat the process one last time down here. And that's it. You've got all your construction planes created. You've got your geometry created. And now it's time to go ahead and manufacture this. Now to machine this, why don't we pocket this first? So we're going to head up here to our NC Manager. And from our multi-axis machining, we're going to select our four-axis positioning. What's nice about this is you can select these different types of machining anywhere throughout your manufacturing process. Go ahead and click OK to that. Let's head up here to our pocket operation and we're going to pick my boundaries. I'm going to grab that boundary and then right click. We're going to use a half inch end mill. I already have that selected. I already have our material selected. That's going to be turret position number one. I've got a clearance plane set to two inches and that's because I want the tool to clear when the part indexes to the next side. So I've got a clearance plane of two inches. Our depth looks good. Let's just use traditional pocketing here. We're going to helical in. Let's use a ramp angle of maybe five degrees. We're going to uh, climb cut and we're going to spiral outwards. That looks good. All this looks great so I'll go ahead and finish that. Okay, so there's our pocket on that first side. Now to index to the next side, it's really simple. Just go to plane and select your construction plane. And that's it. That tells one CNC to index the part. So we're just going to repeat the same process. And I think I'll just use the same pocket cycle for that. I'm going to use the same tool and just power through all these menus. And there's the pocket cycle. Now for these holes, you could drill them one at a time if you wanted to. There's lots of ways to drill those. But I'm going to demonstrate our hole wizard. Just click that. One CNC interrogates the entire solid model, and you can see there's the six holes that it's found. I want to machine those holes, so I'm going to just left click here. If there were different diameter holes on this face, you'd, they'd all be listed here, and you just check the ones you want to machine. I'm going to check that, click next. I've got my uh, rapid plane again set to two inches. That's just to clear when we index around. All that looks good. And now what you do is you just tell one CNC what you'd like to do to those six holes. And you can select any of these operations you want. I'm going to center drill and I'm going to drill. Now to uh, specify the parameters for center drill, just double click. And I'm going to come up here and just quickly select a center drill. That's going to be turret position number two. Speeds and feeds are automatically already calculated. 
I want a CAN cycle, so I'm going to select Machine Cycle. If I leave it here, we'll just get G1s and G0s, but here I'll get a CAN cycle. And for depth, I'm going to just center drill this at minus uh, 0.05. That looks good. We're going to use a G81 CAN cycle. The retract mode is just your good old G88, G99, but I don't need that for this. We'll click Finish, and there's a nice cross-sectional view of the hole. Now let's specify the parameters for the drill, so we're going to double click. We're going to select a drill, half inch, that's going to be turret position number three. Speeds and feeds are calculated. Click next. Again, I want a can cycle. And the depth now is going to be minus 0.8. And we'll click next to that. For the peck amount, I'm going to use 150 thousandths. We'll use a, a G83 actually with 150 thousandths peck amount. That looks good. There's the cross sectional view. That looks good. We're set to go, so I'll just click finished and there is our hole operations. Alright, let's go ahead and machine our last side. I'm going to just rotate our part around and to index all we have to do is plane, select phase 3 and that's it. We've indexed to that. Why don't we use the clean circle command for this. So Let's go here to our clean circle and I'm just going to select both those arcs, right click and uh, let's see, let's use a different tool. How about a little smaller? We'll go with the 375. Turret position number 4 looks good. And let's change our clearance plane to two inches. All that looks good. And there we go. All right, now why don't we go ahead and preview our toolpath. There's two types of simulation within one CNC. There's preview and simulation. Preview will show you your solid model against the toolpath. That's what we're going to see here. So there's our solid model. There's our traditional pocket. Oh, let's don't forget uh, here. Uh, Let's also throw some tooling on there. I created some tooling on layer 4 for our indexer, layer 3. That looks good. Now let's preview that. That'll look a little bit more interesting. Okay. I had our indexer upside down, but there we go. That's, that's how it's going to look out there on the shop. There's our traditional toolpath. We can speed things up if we want to. Why don't we speed it up just a little bit more? Now we're indexing around, so you can see our chucks along with the jaws are moving along with that. There's our spot drill. We're going to see our peck drill. If you slow it down, you can actually walk, watch it peck as well. There's our index around. There's no, no crashes, plenty of clearance there. And there's our clean circle. All right, now the other type of simulation that we have is called simulation, and that's going to show the actual tool removing stock. Now, I don't have any stock created, so I think what I'm going to do is just quickly come down here to plane. I'm going to create a construction plane normal to a surface. That's going to be that surface right there. And I'm going to change my color to something different, maybe a light blue. And all I'm doing here is I'm just creating uh, some stock. And why don't we, why don't, whoa, why don't we take that stock I just, or that. I just created some geometry around this boundary. I'm kind of going too fast here, but I created some geometry around this boundary. I'm going to select that geometry by its color, which was light blue. Remember I, and why don't we move that. I'm just, I just want to move it off that face just a little bit. Just because stock is typically a little bit bigger. There we go. So there's that. Now we'll use our extrude tool, extrude curves, and grab that shape, right click, minus seven's good. So you can see that's what I was trying to do, is I was trying to create some stock. And so you've got that big gray solid model there. Now if we now if I select that solid I just selected and put that on a layer called stock, you've got to use uppercase here. So stock. Alright. And what's nice is anything that's on a layer called stock will be used as stock. So if I open up my layer browser, I've got a stock layer. Okay. And so now we can come over here and we'll right click. And instead of preview, we're going to go with simulate. And I want to use stock model. That looks good. And so there's that gray piece of stock we used earlier or that I created earlier. There's our index around. Of course, you can do this for the uh, simultaneous and also the wrap for axis. I don't think I showed that in the last video, but it's important to know that uh, you can certainly create stock if you want to. Okay. Hey, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.